ladies and gentlemen, to a special edition of Do You Speak Geek? This is a DYSG commentary. I am your host, Nix. It's finally nice, I guess, for some of you to go ahead and put a face with the voice that you hear on the podcast. By the way, thank you all for being loyal followers of the podcast. I am so sorry, so sorry for not being there for you guys as I have been as of late. Been on a bit of a hiatus, but we back on it. We doing our thing again. I'm back with a special commentary this time. Hopefully you guys enjoy this one. If you have been following along, welcome back. If you are new to DYSG, welcome. Again, my name is Nix. Let's uh, have everyone go down to the links below. Facebook at DYSG Media. Instagram at Do You Speak Geek. And Twitter at underscore Do You Speak Geek. Welcome to the YouTube channel. Be sure to hit that like button down there. Go ahead and subscribe while you're at it. And leave some comments. I would love to know what you think about past episodes as well as this nice one we're about to get into right now. As I said, this is a DYSG commentary and we're going to get right into it. Let me go over here to my notes real quick. So, Apple TV Plus launched last week and we have Disney Plus launching sometime, I believe, Tuesday or Wednesday of this coming up week. And HBO Max is another streaming service, if you all haven't heard of it. It's coming out in May of 2020. Now, as reported by Forbes, HBO Max is going to be doing a Green Lantern series. Now, if you all are familiar with Green Lantern, he's the intergalactic superhero in DC Comics. TV producer Greg Berlatini, I always mess up names, but anyway, Mr. Berlatini He has produced some of the amazing shows of the Arrowverse, whether it be Flash, Arrow, Supergirl, Black Lightning, Legends of Tomorrow. He's even done the DC Universe stuff for Titans, Doom Patrol, and the upcoming Stargirl as well. Um, He will be personally developing and overseeing this Green Lantern project. Now, we're curious to see if this is going to correlate with the Jeff Johns Green Lantern film project. If you are familiar with the comics, Jeff Johns spearheaded and is personally responsible, mainly responsible, for bringing Green Lantern to the mainstream. His work in bringing Hal Jordan back to life, to the forefront, with Green Lantern Rebirth was nothing short of stellar. He also led us into the Sinestro Core Wars, which eventually led into the penultimate Blackest Night story. Great 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 comic book storytelling if you all have never read these please go find the trade paperbacks at your local comic book store and please do yourself that favor and read these stories with those stories they came up with many ways to have dc get behind what jeff johns was doing and pretty much bring green lantern back to the forefront of what DC Comics is supposed to be, making him so much more canon than what he was. As the core as a whole, they became an integral part of DC's canon, making Hal one of the founding members of the New 52 launch of the Justice League. They released two successful animated films, Green Lantern First Flight and Green Lantern Emerald Knights. Then DC tagged director Martin Campbell and star Ryan Reynolds to bring Green Lantern to the box office. And we all pretty much know how that panned out. Now, the 2011 release made a fraction, just a little bit, above movie budget. And it was critically one of the worst comic book movies ever made. Citing choppy editing, bad direction, plot holes, and just sloppy storytelling. It's a movie that even those involved from the talent to the publication of the character like to forget ever happened. Now, even the animated series that was released that same year couldn't wash out the bad taste in our mouths when it came to what the Green Lantern movie was. I mean, you all saw that movie. It was just... It wasn't it, it wasn't disgustingly horrible, but it could have been so much better than what it was. And it just... It didn't really leave us wanting more from this story. I mean, you had Sinestro getting his yellow ring at the tail end of this thing. I mean, I don't understand how they did that. 
But nevertheless, it happened. And we will try to move on as fans, but we are naturally not going to do that. So, naturally, the GL fans are going to be a bit skeptical when it comes to this new series that's going to be on HBO Max. Done by the same guy who had his hands involved in the screenplay of the movie. Now, here is my way. This is Nick's talking here. Here is my way to avoid a repeat of that disaster. Now, fair warning. I am a source material guy. I love comics. I love source material. That is who I am to the death. But I'm also aware, fully aware of the difficulty it is to jam pack every meticulous detail of an arc into an 18 to 22 hour long episode of a TV episode, of a TV show. So you can call it watering down if you want to. I'm going to call it the cliff notes. Now, this show will have episodes where I feel like the Arrowverse established characters will appear. Um, let's simply predicate all that I'm about to say on the upcoming conclusion of the Arrow series finale and how the crisis on Infinite Earths pans out. Now, if as teased in previous episodes, John Diggle will become a Green Lantern, we can just kick the show off with him either training on Oa or newly beginning his intergalactic duties in Sector 2814. Now, to much people's chagrin, they may not want to admit this, they may not even like this, but I personally feel like this show needs to have Hal Jordan. As teased in numerous episodes in the Arrowverse, it's, you, you really are no longer going to tap dance around the fact that Hal Jordan does not exist in this universe created by Greg Berlatini and the Arrowverse cast and creators. So... We have to put Hal Jordan in this show simply because we can no longer ignore him at this point. You're making a show about Green Lantern and you're not going to use one of the biggest Green Lanterns there is? I mean, come on. Now, I feel like this. The perfect way, the perfect way to bring him in. During the crisis episodes that are going to happen next month, Coast City can get obliterated. You can borrow an element from the Death of Superman story and just completely obliterate Coast City. Now, Hal Jordan, who's already an established Green Lantern at this point, is on his way back to Earth to help the other heroes during the crisis. He sees what happens to his city, he discovers this, and it drives him to madness. Being overcome with fear, it allows the entity of fear, Parallax, to inhabit his body. Now, he goes on a rampage once he has this fear entity indoctrinated into his body. He goes on a rampage, he kills many, many lanterns, he even takes out a few guardians. And it's up to Diggle to stop Hal, free him of Parallax, and revive the core. Ladies and gentlemen, that's your season one right there. I did that for you. Season regulars, you can include owner of the now defunct aerospace airline company, Ferris Air. You can bring in Carl Ferris. Um, you can have Ganthet in there, the last surviving guardian from the Parallax Rampage. You can have lanterns like Kilowog, Tomar 2, and Sonrik Natu from the planet Kurgar, same planet as uh, another lantern is from. Uh, reoccurring characters, you can bring back Hawkman and Hawkgirl from Legends of Tomorrow. Kind of playing around with that little romance that John and Hawkgirl had during the JL animated series. You can kind of play along, play around with that in, that in the first season, you know, just see how that will you know pan out. Because I don't see John and Lila making it out of the crisis. Just knowing who Lila is, I don't see them making it out of the crisis still as a couple. But hey, who I, I, I've been wrong before. I can be wrong again. Now, season two. I'm going to give y'all a few seasons in this, in this video. So, so just stay close, all right? Season two, right? John saves Hal, but needs help to revive the core. 
So he needs Hal to help to revive the core. Now, because Ganthet strongly believes that they have not seen the last of Parallax, they recruit popular lanterns like Arisa, Bidged, and Salak. Even a certain football player from the University of Michigan, Guy Gardner. Now, a lot of people don't like Guy Gardner. I'm a Guy Gardner guy. I like Guy Gardner. I think he should be included in season one simply for comedy relief. Who they would cast as him? I don't know, but I don't care. It's going to be dope. Now, you're probably already thinking, Chauncey, Nix, we got too many Green Lanterns in this story already, bro. Now, you can rotate them in and out for certain episodes. I mean, they patrol space sectors, not just Earth. Your cheat code can always be that blank is off planet on a mission. There you go right there. Now, uh... Throughout season two, Ganthet tells the core of a legendary former Green Lantern from, Son- from Soronik's home planet of Kurigar. Now you have a subplot. The core needs to find Sinestro. Carol Ferris is introduced into the story to help her father rejuvenate Ferris' heir and we start to peel back the history of Carol and Hal during their teenage years growing up in Coast City. So we get some backstory there, kind of like flashbacks of Arrow. Greg Berlatini loves to do that stuff. He'll do it with this too. I, don't have, I have no doubts whatsoever. The last three episodes of season two can go like this. Sinestro rejoins the core at the same time Parallax returns to Earth. Sinestro, along with the other GLs, is taking care of the entity of fear until the fear entity Parallax realizes that its biggest threat needs to become its greatest asset. Parallax captures Sinestro and they vanish. Hal, having a moment of PTSD or whatever you want to call it, is so shook by this fight with Parallax that he quits the core. Crazy, right? He just just quits the core altogether. Like before, he said we're going to introduce Carol Carol Ferris into the show. Uh, maybe even have guest spots from other DC shows. You know, like I said, we're going to have these characters weaving in and out. It's part of the Arrowverse. I have no doubts that we will see a Barry Allen, maybe even a Supergirl, Black Lightning, whoever we may see Batwoman. Whoever else we may see, they will be included in this show some way or form or fashion. Now, season three. Big reveal, right? Follow me. Sinestro comes back to find the core who allowed him to be taken by Parallax and to thank them for allowing him to see that the only way to protect the universe is to strike fear in the hearts of the unjust. So yes, season three, we get the Sinestro Core War. I'm too good at this. Stay close though. Now, subplot. Carol and John try to pull Hal out of this funk so he can help defeat Sinestro and Parallax once and for all. Um, You can even have the reoccurring characters of Jim and John Jordan coming in, you know, Hal's brothers. They come in and try to help him get out of the situation, get him out of the depression, make him happy, remind him of who he is and who their dad was and how he was a man without fear. And, you know, whatever the case may be, you do it this way as well, too. Now, scientist William Han and Hector Hammond are hired to help take Ferris Air to the next level. Their work done together in Central City is what brought them to Coast City, not only to revive the city, but the technology of the future in aerospace at Ferris Air. Dope stuff, right? Now, during a test flight where Hector accompanies a couple of pilots, they breach to Earth 2, and while they're there, they're, they're looking for this meteorite specimen that's going to help push things along with flight, time travel, whatever the case may be, with aerospace technology. Now, having been exposed to this meteorite directly, Hector slowly becomes more intelligent, 
less patient, and slightly deformed. William tries to help his friend, but eventually Hector goes full antag. We all know Hector Hammond with the huge brain and the telekinetic and the telepathic powers. He eventually becomes the big bad of season two. Now, Sinestro, recruiting his core, he gets Arkilo, he gets Hassip, and Romat Ru to help grow his legion for Parallax. Guardian Saeed is found alive and assists Ganthet in making the Green Lantern Corps as strong as it once was. She revealed to Ganthet and the Corps who found her that after the Rampage of Parallax, she went into hiding to protect the Book of Oa. Now, she was also being protected by Green Lantern Sodom Yat from the planet Daxum. Now, we all know we've seen a Daxamite already in Supergirl in the form of mon So we have another Daxamite, you know, kind of weaving it all together. I like y'all, y'all following along now. I know, I, know, I know y'all like this. Y'all following along. So we have that. Final episodes are the full galactic war between the two cores. Hal finally comes back to battle, single-handedly takes down Sinestro, and he jails him on Oa thus beginning their bitter rivalry. Ganthet and Saeed leave the GL. Now, the reason why they leave is during the Sinestro Corps War, they saw that the Green Lanterns were getting slaughtered. At some point during that time, they enabled the Green Lantern Power Rings the ability to... Ena- they enabled the ability of lethal force. So they feel as though, oh, man, we did this to our core. We can no longer be responsible. We can't do this anymore. So what they do is they take it upon themselves to just disassociate themselves from the Green Lantern Corps altogether, and they go to the planet, um, let's see, what's that planet called? Uh, Odom. They go to the planet Odom to get away from it all. So, cut scene to an open field. In the last episode, they cut scene to an open field. It's nighttime. And you see green animated constructs in the sky and they're being created by some unknown guy who just happens to have a green lantern ring season four it's getting good now we're on planet yasmalt atrocitus and the green lantern core are plotting to destroy the green lantern core Because they are a creation of the Guardians, just like the Manhunters who destroyed his entire home sector, 666. He discovers powerful lanterns in sector 2814, which pleases him because of another intention he has for one specific Earthling. Now, John, Hal, and Guy, they find this guy who was making constructs. It's Kyle Rayner. They find him in Coast City and they train him to be a Green Lantern. Carol's father, Carl, becomes sick and he's dying. She learns of a gem in another galaxy on planet Zamoran that has the power to save his life. She uses a very sophisticated ship and travels to find this gem. Atrocitus and his lanterns make their way to Earth only to be stopped by numerous Green Lanterns. John and Hal seek out Gantha and Saeed to help understand where these new lanterns came from. They find them on the planet Odom, and they are behaving kind of secretly. You know, kind of, kind of like, oh, 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 shush, no, no, don't keep them away from here, you know, just whatever they get to say, hey, hey, guys, how you doing? They act, they, they act a little suspicious, right? Now, they introduce the Lanterns to their friend, St. Walker. They also remorsefully tell Hal and John about the massacre of Sector 666. Ganthet then asks St. Walker to escort them back to 2814. Now, back on Earth, Guy continues training Kyle, a lot of comic relief because of the sadness of what these two stories are doing so far with Carol and then with the slaughter of Sector 666, it's kind of dark right now. So we need some comic relief from Guy training Kyle. It's funny stuff. I, 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 I saw it in my head as being hilarious. 
Now, in one episode, we have William inviting his family to Ferris Air, where they continue, continue now to ridicule him for being a nerd, just like he's been his whole life. That's a little pin in that. Stay, stay with me. There's a little pin there. Now, two-part season finale. Carol finds a gem, but upon touching it, is encased in a violet-colored cocoon. Mm. Carl Ferris dies. The rage of the Red Lanterns is destroying Earth. Atrocitus says he is not only going to destroy the Green Lantern Corps, but to the end, but to end the life of a William Hand. Now, news coverage shows Atrocitus declaring this, and it sends William into hiding only to be found, captured, and mentally tortured by the exiled Guardian Scar. The Green Lanterns are doing their best, but are still unable to stop Atrocitus and company. Ganthet, Saeed, St. Walker, and a few other Blue Lanterns show up to supercharge the Green Lanterns and drive their forces off of Earth. Hal escorts Ganthet back to Odom and is propositioned by Ganthet to lead the Blue Lantern Corps. So Hal has a decision to make before the new before the new season starts. Back on Oa, a prison transport to Kurgar goes wrong as Green Lanterns are attacked by Red Lanterns. The prisoner is Sinestro. Now, with his power ring, he slays the Green Lanterns and he heads towards Quard to gather his troops for an attack on Earth. You know, he got out of jail. Sinestro want that smoke again with Hal because he's like, hey, you put me in here. I got I to gotta come back. I got to come back and revenge this ale you, took, you gave me. You know what I'm saying? So, now we have season five. Scar has manipulated the missing William Hand into a life of crime while adopting the moniker Black Hand. One night, Black Hand is stopped by Kyle Rayner, and he's thrown in jail. He was doing some kind of a crime, whether it was a B&E, robbery, whatever the case may be, he's stopped by him at this moment. Now, while he's in jail, Scar communicates with Black Hand telepathically, calling him weak, attacking his morals and that his family ruined him to be the great Black Hand of Evil Scar wants him to be. Black Hand then breaks out of prison and then visits his family home. Get this. Black Hand murders his mother, father, two brothers before killing himself. Wow. Wow. This sacrifice, quote-unquote, was Scar's plan all along. This amount of death gave him the power to summon Necron to Earth, giving way to the Black Lanterns and for them to rise. Now, if you read Black, if you read Black as Night, that rise ugh, it just gave you chills. Now, on Odin... Hal eventually declines Ganthet's offer to lead the Blue Lanterns. Before Hal leaves for Earth, Ganthet gives Hal a mission for old time's sake. A rumored agent of Orange plans to attack the lantern planet Mogo. Hal goes to Akara to investigate. There he finds Larflees, the sole orange lantern of Avaris. Now Avaris, if you don't know what that means, that means greed. The two fight, but Lara Flees escapes. On Zamron, Carol is awakened by Yuren Sinril, a.k.a. Fatality, of the Star Sapphires. She educates Carol on the emotional spectrum and her former ties to the Sinestro Corps. She also warns Carol of the imminent War of Light that is coming. Yara tells Carol she needs her help to defeat the Red Lantern Corps. Carol begins her training. While recruiting more soldiers for his corps, Sinestro encounters Indigo One and Monk of the Indigo tribe. Now get this, Sinestro learned that his late partner and friend, Abin Sur, 
the one who's how how they got his ring from. Abin Sur of the Green Lantern Corps helped to create these wielders of compassion. They tried to teach Sinestro their ways instead of giving into fear. Sinestro does not yield, costing him several core members. The Indigo tribe disappear, leaving Sinestro confused and angry. Yeah, he's, he's pretty pissed off at this point. John, Guy, and Kyle patrol for threats and are encountered by deceased family members and friends. These are now Black Lanterns. They are outnumbered and outgunned. Luckily, GLs once again find help from the dispatched Blue Lanterns. Now, these Blue Lanterns come to Earth to help them, but they also bring along Ganthet and Saeed. They eventually tell them the tale in the Book of Oa about Blackest Night and how it is now inevitable. The three-part finale to Season 5. Blackest Night, War of Light. A team up of each Lantern Corps to rid the universe of Necron and his army rages on through the cosmos. It's glorious. Hal can't believe Carol is a star sapphire. Under the advisement of Ganthet, Atrocitus, Sinestro, Indigo One, Saint Walker, and Larflees work with Hal and Carol to choose one among them to harness the entire emotional spectrum and defeat Necron. They all agree Kyle should be the one. Imbued with all the power of the emotional spectrum and all the rings, Kyle becomes a white lantern of life and blasts Necron until he is no more. Kyle also revives every deceased friend and family member used by Necron. Ladies and gentlemen, I just gave you five seasons. I just booked you in for five years of this show. Greg Berlatini, DC Comics, HBO Max. If you are watching, if you are listening, you're welcome. There it is, folks. My name is Nix. Thank you for watching this Do You Speak Geek commentary. My name is Nix. My name is Nix. And I do and I do this. Just so you know. My name is Nix and I do this. I speak geek. Do you speak geek?